for a moment, close your eyes. Imagine you're out in the ocean, all alone, just floating along on your boat, waiting for your white whale prop to appear. Yeah, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> your white whale is out there, but the odds are not in your favor if you're just sitting back and waiting for it to appear, let alone thinking you're the only one after it. So what do you do? Here's how I found my white whales. Hey everyone, Nick here again at Move Your Relics. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, and for those who don't know, a white whale is typically used as a metaphor for an enduring symbol, obsession, goal, or an object that encompasses your life, defines you, in which the pursuit may ultimately destroy you. Or it could be the one that got away, or something you chase but are very unlikely to obtain. This could be your dream job, dream girlfriend or boyfriend, or the ultimate car you want to own. And for me, this is a McLaren F1, but I'm not picky. I will definitely settle for a ride in one. So if you own one, hit me up. Okay, so now that we're all hopefully on the same metaphorical white whale page, when I talk to a lot of collectors about their whales or grails, I hear a very common response more times than not. Hopefully it'll pop up soon in an auction, or it'll pop up someday, they always do, or some other scenario that relies purely on luck. Chances are, if it's your white whale, it's most likely 20, 50, or even hundreds of other people's white whales as well. It only takes one crazy, persistent, obsessive collector like myself out of the other 50 or 100 collectors that won't want to wait for it to magically appear or risk it being bought up by someone else first. If that one person is after the same prop, you may never get that at bat. So how do you become that guy or gal? Simple, upgrade. Sounds easy enough, but let's break that down. If you've been in this hobby for a couple of years or more, you've seen many collections change over time, and many of these collectors' newer acquisitions, more often than not, tend to be what we call grails. Sounds like common sense, right? The longer someone's in a hobby, the more a collector gets to know other collectors and key people, which then leads to more chances to finding a grail prop. But sadly, common sense isn't so common, and in collecting, it takes an additional step beyond time itself before you're more than likely to get offered your grail. And here's where upgrading really comes into play. Ever hear the phrase pay to play? It can be used many different ways, but for collecting, it means you gotta buy often and over time more strategically. I get it. There's only so much cash in the bank, so you can't just buy to buy all willy nilly or you'll go broke pretty fast. And what if that white whale pops up? You upgrade. By now you gotta be thinking, I just like saying the word upgrade, maybe a little, but I'm getting there. So just stay with me. For me to get this Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, Red Ranger helmet, I first started like 99% of collectors and looked on the main dealer pages, asked around, and did a quick Google search for Mighty Morphin Helmets. And of course, nothing popped up. I was quickly humbled by multiple Power Ranger collectors and was told those helmets are beyond rare. And if I ran across one, it was most likely a fake. And the few real ones out there were locked away in private collections or with collectors who won't ever sell. For most collectors, I've noticed, this is where they stop their search and just sit back and wait. But not this crazy lunatic. <laughs> I knew one had to be out there. And the more I searched, the more I opened up my search into getting a helmet from one of the other series just to get my foot in the door. I first started with the blue turbo helmet. It wasn't cheap and I had to sell a few props to afford it, but that's upgrading. Then I got offered Steve's Mighty Morphin Helmet from the 25th anniversary episode, which got me one step closer, but I also started to appreciate these helmets in general more. Next was the Quantum Ranger Helmet, followed by the Wild Force Helmet. Along this journey, 
I had to sell less significant pieces in our collection to afford these helmets. But by buying these helmets, I learned a ton, got to meet the right people, and most importantly, it got me on the radar to be offered the original movie helmet. It not only got me on the radar, but it also proved that I was a serious buyer. White whales and grails are sold 9 times out of 10 in private sales and not in auctions. More than likely, your white whale is currently in a private collection or with a crew member, but for that person to know that you're even out there and that you're a serious buyer, you have to be out there in the first place. If your other collector buddies know you're after a certain prop, that does increase your likelihood of getting offered that prop. But let's be very honest and realistic for a second. If a prop dealer is offered that prop first, even if they're a friend, you better be ready to fork over a huge sum to convince that person to sell to you instead of sending it to an auction or selling to someone else with deeper pockets. But if you truly want your white whale, you have to get out there, shake some babies, kiss some hands, buy props within the same franchise that may not be your ideal choice, but get your name out there. And remember, you can sell your previous acquisitions once the white whale reveals its ugly head. I had to sell my blue turbo and the 25th anniversary helmets to afford the movie helmet. Did I just find Scorpion's Mortal Kombat mask without having to buy less desired annihilation props first? No way. I showed the community my devotion first and later I was contacted about the mask. Our alien set. I bought countless props from the other alien movies first, even from AVPR which ultimately landed us the opportunity to buy that head. And to afford it, we literally had to sell every Alien franchise prop that we own besides Alien 3 Inner Jaw. We recently got a prop that we never would have had the chance to own if we didn't buy and sell a lot with this particular person. I could go over countless examples, but I'm pretty sure it's very clear up to this point. If you're offered a prop within a similar franchise of your White Whale, it might be good to buy it and just sell it later. Think of it this way as well. What if your white whale never pops up and you turn down the next best thing waiting for it? And once again, I get it. This hobby is expensive. You can't afford it all. Very few people can. not But that's why upgrading is so key. You can always sell later, but you're only handicapping yourself by holding out and waiting. Because while you're waiting for the next auction catalog to get released, collectors who understand this upgrading approach are probably buying your white whale as we're watching this. Buy often, grow your reputation, and sell when you need to raise funds for an upgrade. And over time, your collection will have more white whales and grails than ever. This is the way. So I hope you all got an idea nugget or two from this video, because believe it or not, this was actually the hardest video we had to make up to this point. And I'll actually be expanding on this more later because this is all so key to getting your dream props. I don't think there's a single grail prop behind me that wasn't obtained from this approach. Soon we'll be doing some close-up prop reviews and some awesome podcasts. So don't forget to hit subscribe so you can be notified when we release our next video and hit like to help us grow and keep this channel around. Thanks everyone.